sir. We would certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, could you just tell us you you were just shopping yesterday and you you know walked into a situation where you chose to get involved. So if you could briefly describe what was going on and, and what you decided you had to do. Um, what specifically do you want to know? Well, you were shopping and then some little kids ran in, right? Just it was one child that he ran in and told us it was an active shooter in Walmart. But I didn't pay any mind because for one, he's just a child, and um, for two. You're inside the mall, so how would you know it's an active shooter? So me and the guy at the register, we didn't pay it any mind. And so then what happened? I don't want to get too close into detail because what I'm putting out there right now is already getting twisted up. And what I did is what I did. And I, I'm not getting into too far into detail because some of the blogs are putting words in my mouth that I never said. What so do you want to clarify? I want to clarify that what I did was what I was supposed to do. I don't, I understand it was heroic. And uh, I'm looked at as a hero for it, but that's, that wasn't the reason for me. I'm just focused on the kids that were, I could not get in the family that were lost because it's, it hurts me. Like I lost, like they were part of me. I don't even know the people that, that died or the kids that, that, I, um, that I took with me, but I just want the media to stop twisting my words up because some of the things that, are, that they're putting out there is not what I said. Like, I'm, I'm more focused on the families that were lost. I want to reach out to the families that were lost and the families that lost their children because the focus should not be on me. It should be on the world and what happened in Ohio and the people that what happened in Chicago and what happened yesterday. It should not be on me. I, I know what I did was heroic, but I'm more focused on the families that were lost and the kids that died and the people that died. It's, it's the spotlight should not be on me right now. What I did, I get it. I was heroic and most people wouldn't do that, but I went most of the focus to go out to the families. I need the media to go out to the families and make sure they're okay. Like I'm getting calls 24 seven. It's like, are they even checking up on the people, on the families that have lost their loved ones? Everybody's all focused on me. I understand what I did was what was heroic, but I did that because that's what I was trained to do. That is what the military has taught me to do. And that's why I'm thankful to be in the military and what they have taught me. And I'm thankful for all the training I have went through and all the NCOs that has been there and taught me how to shoot and how to zero and how to protect the people that I'm supposed to protect because that's exactly what I rose my hand up for. But this media stuff it needs to be more focused on the families that for the people that lost their families and not me. I understand what I did was what I did and I, I have no problem with get, giving interviews but I really want you guys to focus on the people that are actually grieving through this. Yes I'm grieving but I'm not the one that lost a family member. Yes it feels like I have lost one but they are the ones that need to be be um you know uh you know <laughs> Any other you questions? You saved lives yesterday, and that's something positive to, to talk about. Yes. What, what exactly did you do? You, you saw those kids, and, and that, that really... I, all, I, all I thought of was, with, uh, was how I would want another man to react if I had a child and I wasn't around my child at that time, so I just did what I w would want another person to do for my children. I know it might be hard, PFC Oakley, but could you maybe describe... I'm not describing anything, because I don't want... I, I didn't get any sleep last night. I was... I don't want to think about what happened because it was tragic. I'm telling you, this was the worst thing I've ever been through in my life, and I don't want to keep having flashbacks of what happened. And I don't, I don't want to talk about what went on in there because I just want to forget about it all. I just want to focus on the people that has lost their loved ones. I, I don't want to focus on what happened because I already put what happened out there, and it's, it's all over the world. What happened out there is what I said is what I said, and that's exactly what happened. I don't want to focus on keep asking me on what what's what happened I just I want to forget about it because I don't want to I'm already suffering from this and I don't want to continue to suffer from it your story we, we, your story we can pause. Let's, These let's are take a break yeah, let's take, take a, a break. pause pause really quick come on thank you appreciate thank it. you I have no problem but I just I just want to you know, it's my condolences. I just wish I could touch the families that I, you know, 
I just feel like the media is more focused on me when it shouldn't be. Like, I understand what I did. But, but I'm just saying, you still got them, so you don't have to do anything. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine because I want to show my emotion. I want to show the world that what I, I'm not trying to capitalize on what to, on top of what I did. I know one thing you did for me, PFC Oakley, was you inspired me. I'm a concealed gun carrier, and I thought of myself with my newborn, who was born last year, about what I would do in a situation like that. And I was inspired. And I don't think that you're, you're seeing the whole story here. I think you're seeing part. We are going out and reaching out to those families, but also we're looking for some hope. We're looking for some inspiration and that's what you've provided. Have you found comfort in the people of El Paso? I have, yes. A lot has reached out to me, but would it really get more comfort if I could physically reach out to the families that, that actually lost their loved ones, not mm -hmm. just through the media. Would you like to do that? Or are you gonna make plans to I would. Them? I don't, I don't want to, I, I do send my prayers and my condolences to everybody, but I, I would more than like, I would love to do it in person. I would love to touch and hug them and actually give them my comfort because that's exactly what they need. Well, and it was your hugs and comfort yesterday that really were more powerful than the weapon you were carrying. Can you talk about that? Can you, can you, um, well, because you, that you, you had your weapon with you. Yes. You didn't use it, but no. what you used were your arms to pick up those kids. Yes. And that proved to be a very powerful tool for you to have. Yes. Thank Can you talk you. about that? Um, I just thought about keeping them as close as I could as possible. Like a couple of them jumping out of my hands, like I said yesterday. Some of them were jumping out of my hands. I couldn't do much for them, but the ones that I could keep with me, you know, we made. I made sure that they made it, made it safe to where they need to be. I have a couple scratches on my face because, you know, they, they were just, they were just. I can't even spit it out. They, uh, they were just scared. So I just did what I could do possible. Um, are you a dad yourself? I'm not, but I thought of it as if I was because I have a goddaughter and I protect her like she's mine. And any other kids that were with me, I, that, that was my reason was to protect them like they were mine. What do you want people to know about this whole thing that you don't think generally they know about Just what it was like to go through something like that? You don't have to answer any that you don't want to. Can you repeat it for me? That's the same. You just had to think about it for a second. What, what would you want everybody to know? Because you got all these cameras and you have a chance to say something about what you experienced and what you'd like to have people take away from this. You, know, you mentioned the families. I just want them to know through uh, times like this, like don't be scared to put to put others before yourself because that's the way I was raised. I was raised to always put others before myself. So that's just what came into my mind was putting others, especially because I'm legally armed. So. You know, any heart, any harm comes come, comes near. I'm I'm there. Like I'm the one that can do something about it. So I was always taught, and my NCOs just taught me. My my parents just taught me. Just to always put others first, because you'll be re well respected for it. How did you find the strength to do? It's work? just in my character. I've al I, I've always put others before myself. I, I'll be dead broke and help somebody else before I put money towards what I, what I need to do. I just think about others first, because that's what I would want others to do for me. If I needed somebody, I I would want them to put me and you know help me out so I, I'm, I'm always helping others and actually i'm always helping i was just raised like that this wasn't something new that just happened yesterday I, this is just my character it's in it and it's it, the army took a big part of that and if it was you know teaching me selfless service that's really what popped in my mind as well because yes it was in my character but being in the army is what brought that out of me more you know more physically to other people that i don't even know so it sounds like it was a combination of your upbringing and your training that really came together. Yes. You, how did one complement the other, do you think? Can, can you ask me that? How did one sort of complement? So you had your feeling of, you know, I'm, I'm going to be there for people, but you also had training that you've got. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to shoot. Like, when I shoot, I'm, I'm, I never shoot lower than 37. So if I, before the Army, I probably, I probably didn't know how to shoot, but the Army is what taught me everything. Like, everything I know about just being prepared be, be prepared for things like this is it just came from the army so i really i'm really thankful for the army for teaching a soldiers how to you know protect and serve do you know how many kids you actually helped? i don't no. how many you actually helped rescue no can you see their faces i wish i could see them again if no, i if, if i have in your mind? yes that's, that's why i don't want to talk about what happened because i don't want to 
go have those 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 images in my head anymore. I just want to forget about it, and I just want people to come together, and you know, I just want to forget about what happened. I just want the families to be, you know, taken care of. That's what matters is the, is the families. Who were one of the Who was <clears throat> one of the first people you called right after this? Happened? My father. Your father. How did, he, how did he's he a sergeant major, and he was, you know, he um, just gave me guidance on what to do. So I definitely called my father. Has there been anybody else within that you know here that's been supportive or, you know, Every, been El Paso, regardless, all over El Paso, all over the world, I'm just getting support from it. I just don't like when the media tries to twitch my words. That's why I'm not going in detail about anything because what I said is what I already said. I mean, but my heart's still being fast. I'm in the military, so when I hear a gunshot, I, you know, I just, I got my license carried, so I'm in a, a sports store and I'm shopping, I'm buying a jersey. A little kid runs in and talking about us, I can shoot in Walmart, but me and the guy that's, uh, that works there, we're just like, he's a kid, so we didn't believe him. So I walk out the mall, go to Foot Locker, I hear, pop, pop. I got my license carried, so I pull my gun out. And uh, I just started to hide, and they, they closed the Foot Locker. And some, uh, some people went there, they were so scared, they just lifted the cage, and they just dipped. So I ran with them. And I just tried to make my way to the, uh, to the parking lot. And I see a whole bunch of kids just running around, you know, without their parents and stuff. So I got my bag in my hand. I'm trying to pick them up one more, as many as I can, just run out. But they're so, like, you know, anxious. They're, like, jumping out of my hand. So ain't much I could do for the kids. So I just made my way out. And uh, when I got out, the, uh, I guess one of the cops thought I was a shooter or something. So I had to, like, show him my clip and stuff, show him it was still full. I got my license carry. He said I was fine. Go out. I called a friend to tell him to come pick up my gun. And I'm here now, but... Uh, it's, it's a, it was just a whole bunch of kids up in there. I'm sorry, I'm shaking. But it was a whole bunch of kids in there. And I just hope nothing happened to the kids. They were, out, they were out their parents and stuff. I tried to pick up as many as I could and bring them out with me. But. Now, Glenn, obviously we've heard about stuff like this happening across the country. Um, you being in a situation where you're seeing it here in El Paso, like, how does that make you feel? Shit, I'm in the military, so when I just, I hear gunshots, I just think to pull them You know, take cover, save whoever I can, but I was just, so worried about those kids, man, because ain't no telling. Because I, I heard it was more than one shooter. I heard it was four. And I'm just worried about those kids. I wasn't even really worried about I was trying to pick up the kids, man. I, I wasn't really worried about myself. So, you know, it just brings back flashbacks of, you know, it's just, uh, I, don't, I just hope the kids are right. That's all I'm thinking about right now is the kids. I'm not even worried about myself right now. Um, I was in a sports store named Fanatics. I was buying a jersey, and a little kid runs in here and says it's an active shooter at Walmart. But me and the guy, we didn't pay no mind because, you know, he's just a little kid. So I walk out, and I go to um, I go to Foot Locker, and all I hear is, ball, ball. So I got my license to carry, and I'm in the military. So all I think is, all I think is you know, get my gun and think fast. Yeah, let's let's talk about the, the re recent reporting we're getting, because if it's accurate, it is significant and should not be glossed over. And that is, let's look at what we've heard. We've heard that the Walmart is a center of activity. We've heard the possibility of multiple casualties inside the Walmart. But then we saw interviewed a young man, a military member, who said he was at a foot locker that would be in the mall mm -hmm. and that he heard shots fired and that he drew a weapon in the mm -hmm. mall. What does that tell us? We know the, the Walmart is physically separate and shares a parking lot with the mall. That tells us that if that's accurate, the possibility of multiple shooters becomes more possible because we are talking about multiple buildings or the shooter is moving from one building to another building, literally across a parking lot to do so. <clears throat> this is troubling. This, this seems to be more than the typical domestic violence, workplace violence incident, but rather something that is designed perhaps to hurt, to hurt multiple people or is a moving scenario, very troubling, very challenging for law enforcement to deal with. Did was what I was supposed to do. I don't, I understand it was heroic and uh, I'm looked at as a hero for it, but that, that wasn't the reason for me. I'm just focused on the kids that I could not get and the families that were lost because 
it's, it hurts me. Like, I lost, like, they were part of me. I, I didn't get any sleep last night. I was, I don't want to think about what happened because it was tragedy. I'm telling you, this was the worst thing I've ever been through in my life. And I don't want to keep having flashbacks of what happened. And I don't, I don't want to talk about what went on in there because I just want to forget about it. And I go to um, I go to Foot Locker, and all I hear is ball, ball. We're hearing now that uh, KTSM is reporting that the mayor of El Paso uh, is saying that three suspects are in custody. Okay, the mayor DeMargo, DeMargo uh, of El Paso, El Paso Texas. saying yeah, it's saying the three suspects are in custody. That's all we know right now. That is coming from our affiliate KTSM in El Paso.